<clears throat> Alright, so now we have something like this. And so the first one is the stake block. So obviously what I'm going to be doing is, I do this a lot, I go to my 1.18.1, this is everything to do with Minecraft, and I go to assets, Minecraft, textures, uh, item, and then I want to look up S-T-E-A-K, search. Is it not called steak? Is it cooked? Uh, co cooked some, oh, there it is, cooked beef. Uh, move it in. And now I have basically this. And all I gotta do is basically turn this into, ooh, you look awful. There we go. I wanna turn this into a block. Image, transform, rotate 180 degrees. And then I want to control C, control V. I just wanna drag it. Transform, 90 degrees. All right, and then I can do control uh, A, control C, control V. Now that looks like a, this is like a steak ball. <laughs> Now, now I'm going to start, now I basically have the general view of the block. Then I'm going to start basically copying colors. So obviously I want the steak block to still look like the steak block. So what I mean by copy colors is just using the colors as you can see as I'm just doing an outline as I'm trying to fill in the block. And I'm also trying to do that texture where I got a dark to light and then make the dark on the edges so it looks like it's like more steak on steak. You know, that way, you know, at least I'm trying to make something that makes sense and try and make it look nice. All right, so now it looks like we have the stake block. So now it's very symmetrical and stuff like that. So what I wanna make sure is that it is tile seamless. To do this, I um, let's make a copy. So what I'm gonna do is uh, control A, control C, and then we're just gonna control V. So now that's the copy variant on top of it, looking nice. There we go, and it's all there. So now that I have a copy of the stake, all I gotta do is I go to help, uh, search command. It's gonna be called tile seamless. And you can see how it changed a lot of it. And then I'll hit okay. And that's fine the way it is. Definitely looks like that's a bunch of stakes. <laughs> And then from here, now we have basically the stake block looking texture. So when I'm done, I'm going to uh, export. And this is going to be uh, STA stake block. There we go. So I'm going to put it in my pictures, export, and then export. So we have chicken block and uh, stake block basically. So now we only have half the work. We need to make the raw variant. Let's, let's move it to the side. Now that I know exactly what I'm going to be doing, it'll make this a lot easier. New, transparency, okay. The textures are a little bit different, but at least all the spacings and colors just, uh, they just about look the same. Meaning that if I were to repeat this process of the tile seamless, there should not be any issue and it should look like this. Okay. And then compare it to this one. If you ever have trying to compare it like this and you notice that the, some things are off, um, just make sure that you move it um, and that all the spacing are the same and the zoom is the same. So the, the zoom here is a little bit different. So on this one, it's the 23,000. And then here, if I just zoom in, it's the 23,000. Then make sure that all your spacings are, the, the scroll wheels are filled in. That way when you click, you'll notice that they are now the same. Now, I feel like this idea is gonna be a little weird, or not this idea, it's the, the reference is gonna be a little weird, but I'm gonna be making rotten flesh as uh, the beef jerky. And it's because I like the, the crisp texture that it has, and I figured that it's a little thick, so I wanted to thin it out and then just try and make it look like jerky. 
and every time I generally do this once in a while where sometimes when I want specific colors on something I'll obviously have the original reference and then what I'll usually do is I'll copy color where I'll just you know pixel by pixel transfer over the colors I want I call it copy color I don't know if there's an actual term for it but I do this a lot it's actually how I made my uh, my Minecraft skin in Mathcraft that you see all the time and that's me like when I I always tease Vapor all the time where I'd be like this took me four days to make my entire skin pixel by pixel because you can see this probably took me a long time and the fact that I do it I do this all the time it's it's really no big deal but I, it always comes out looking the way I want it which is why I do it because I don't know if there's a faster way of doing it and personally this little piece isn't enough to call it jerky so I just have to extend it three times and then I have to do the final remodel and recolor textures so that it looks great. And then finally, before I export it, I have to center it. Usually when I have something in here, all I have to do is go into IntelliJ. I hit Control D, which will copy the, um, the thing from on top. And then I just rename it to whatever I'm renaming it. And then remembering that the green text is all in lowercase, but is also the renamed item. That'll make the game crash and have an error if I don't do, remember to do that. I already have these food items set. There's, as you can see, a ton of food items that I've coded. The, if the request specifically says how much saturation and how much hunger, then yes, I will put in the hunger and saturation because if it is custom, it really isn't that difficult to do so. The actual putting this in the code for IntelliJ is actually super easy, considering it's not a block. Uh, it's not does not have a block state, which means I can jump straight to the lang file and then give it a name in the game. When it comes down to the model, there because once again it's not a block, it doesn't have a block model. It's an item, so it just gets an item model. And lastly, if I've exported it, um, the picture, I can just drop the file into the textures, and it'll be in there. And so from this point in the game, it's in the game, it's, you know, it should be working properly. However, we would, it, for the survival aspect, not just a creative one, we would like to give it a recipe that way I can actually obtain it in the game rather than just obtain it from the inventory. And now we are in the game just to see if it works. We just have to give myself a command, make sure that I am able to give myself the materials to craft it. Then I get to craft it and then I get to eat it to make sure if it's what I like and if it's what I like then basically because this is a food item I like to run around make sure the saturation feels okay make sure that the crafting's okay um if the player likes a specific saturation I don't change it what I'll do is I'll just see how it feels like because I do play in a survival world in this aspect that way I can just tell how it feels from this point Every time an idea is finished, I like to make sure that it is tabbed into the done list because uh, I have a whole code list for every week that I do, so it's nice that I keep track. So this is actually the first crop on the Help Me Hardcore series, so I have to make a whole new section, and then I didn't want to call the actual block itself, so let's think of uh, wheat for a moment. So there are seeds, you plant the seeds, and that's a wheat block is what it's going to turn into. It's called, it's just called wheat, but it's a wheat block because it drops wheat. That's just how they did it. I didn't want to call it Midas plant, uh, the block, so I called it Midas touch. So you plant the Midas seeds, it makes a Midas plant block, but that block doesn't give you Midas's fingers, you know, because of the touch, it gives you the raw gold because it's his touch turns to gold. So it's supposed to be a nice self-reference to that. This little extra bit of code here is just so that it, uh, like there's the seeds and how it is considered a crop block. Um, there's special functionality to how that works. I'm not going to try and explain it. I don't, I don't know how to particularly explain it. I just know it, that it, it makes it a crop block. Um, and it wasn't working for a while. It's just because I didn't have it imported in the mod block. So once I imported it, everything was fine. So the block is called minus touch, but the block states don't actually have to be called minus touch. I actually label them all gold and they have different stages because we all know that there are seven different stages. However, when you place the seats, that's technically a stage, which means I'm going to actually have to be texturing the eight stages of the block. So that's just something to keep in mind that they that even though it's a block state and there's multiple of them, they do not actually have to be the same name as the, um, what's it called, the, the, the actual like block itself. 
the lang file is super simple. It's just stuff of how uh, you use the the block file, and then you're just basically turning it into or item file, and you're basically just turning it to how you want it to appear when you hover over it in the game uh, when you're looking at it. But uh, since I was doing the block, which is since under minus touch, and um, it actually doesn't need uh, a lang file because, but I. You know, because you, you don't hold that kind of block. You don't hold the, the the wheat block. You just hold the item wheat. So that was just something different to point out. So I mainly, I just did the Midas seeds in this case because the actual block itself does not need a, um, a lang file. Now, I felt like this is going to be a little special how I was doing this. Obviously, the result is going to be raw gold. So to do this, I actually just simply shrunk the little bit of raw gold, and I wanted to call it the major background. And also, I'm going to be doing, like right now, I'm going to be texturing the eight stages, and I'm going to be going backwards. So obviously, an item is 16 by 16 pixels, but obviously, the, um, the, the, the crop, like is pretty high but so this one's actually going to be a really small crop but i also really wanted to resemble the the raw gold as much as i can so i broke into smaller pieces and then once again i broke it to even smaller pieces i saw that there was some stuff at the bottom so i just filled in those holes but then i was able to export it and um this is the the first stage of the seven but so from here i have to make them smaller and smaller as i go but uh, I, I ended up making a little sheet to, or a guideline on how I wanted to continue it all the way from the stage 7 to stage 0. This is the guideline that I'm going to be using. If you know how to read it, great. If you don't, that's okay because I'm the one who's going to be coding, or not coding, texturing it anyways. Now I don't really know why uh, I I figured that this was this was gonna, this was my favorite one, and I think it's not necessarily the fact that it was a food item, or it wasn't a it wasn't a food item. It was it was a, a unique idea that I liked, and then there was also the fact that this is not only just a unique idea, but this is also a new idea for the series. I can comfortably do crops. This isn't the first crop I've done, but which is probably why I can easily do the crops. But like the fact that this is the first one of the series makes us not only special, and not only that, but I, I think that this was actually a really cool idea, and I'm glad that I was able to make the minus seeds. Um, the colors at the very end didn't seem as bright and vibrant as I expected them to be, but um, hopefully, ho you know, hopefully that's okay uh, in the end. But this is just the, basically the final result of how doing all set, uh, well, eight of them uh, textures went. Uh, I just made a bunch of smaller variants and just went smaller and smaller until I basically had two pixels. And actually, it wasn't until I got to the seeds that I realized that the seeds are the golden color I wanted. And the reason I realized that is because what I did is I took the end result of the gold crop that I made, which was the minus touch, and I, I, I clicked and dragged it over. But then once I realized um, that the, like once the seeds didn't really get like, like that golden vibrant I was really looking for, so I made them the golden vibrant from the, uh, the original raw gold, and that was the golden vibrant I was looking for. So yes, the crops are a little more bland. I might actually redo the um, the texturing just so that they really do look like gold compared to you know compared to like how it did, but um, it is in the game and I'm glad it's in the game. I'm glad I got it textured and I think that this was really cool. Just a quick mention: do not forget to um, may, uh, forget to put in the loot table so that when you break the block, um, they actually drop the seeds. And as you can see in the actual gameplay, you bone meal it, you break it, it drops the minus seeds, it drops the raw gold. It's um, it, it it it's perfect. It's just how how I intended it to be. This is the first crop in the game, so I'm very excited to have something new in the game. But um, that's <laughs> that. I, I don't know. I just love the ideas. I love the series. I wish more. I you know. Let's 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 keep it going. Let's 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 keep it going. And also put on special requests that they were to be rare in jungle temples. I made it with the weight of one as well as the other jungle temple stuff in one of the rolls. Uh, I did a little test and this should this should spawn about one in every 15 jungle temples, which is pretty rare. And I think it is still findable either by a random chance or if I actually get an elytra and I start flying around to a bunch of jungle temples, absolutely Midas searching. Because honestly, this is a little OP once you find it, but that's only if you find it, right? 
But that is all I'm going to be doing for in this part one video of how it's generally made in here. Uh, I think that this is really cool. This is a new idea where I get to show you like basically the summary of the long hours I take coding and texturing all this really cool stuff. Thank you guys so much for the support. I love doing this. It's, it's great. And I look forward to have such uh, an amazing series as the weeks go on. I mean, sorry I started with week seven, but I guess it took me seven weeks to get comfortable with this enough where I'm like, hey, let me let me show what's going on. Because honestly, I think this is really cool, too, and how like the the process of the the under table works, too. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And without further ado, 